Hey, it's Yuka. Today we're getting a chance to do an early preview of the new iPhone 16 and 16 Pro here in New York City. Let's start by talking about the iPhone 16. This year, the color palettes could be one of my favorites of all time. It comes in ultramarine, teal, pink, white, and black. We got the new ultramarine and pink iPhone 16s here. This one's the 16, this one is the plus. The colors are super vibrant and the finish is kind of like a matte finish. It's almost kind of like a little bit frosted and the camera part has a darker color around it. By the way, Apple stopped including Apple stickers starting this year. So if you want to get a sticker, you have to buy it from the Apple store and you have to do it in person. You can request the stickers at the time of your purchase, but if you get it delivered or get it from other retailers, you will not be able to get it iPhone 16 got rid of the silent switch and instead got two new buttons, the action button and camera control. Action button was on the iPhone 15 Pro series, but with this button, you can map it to open your favorite apps or make really interesting and customized action with Apple shortcuts. The new camera control button is literally a button that lets you control your camera. This is a physical button, but also has a force sensor with haptic feedback. You can do like a half press and sliding interactions as well as clicking. So here is how camera control works. You can click on it to bring out the camera and you can lightly press to bring out the slider. You can gently slide on the button to change the settings and pressing twice we'll go into different setting modes. Let's try exposure and light click. And now you can slide to change the settings here. And then whenever you wanna take a photo, you can click into it. And right now I'm in photo mode. So when you are in photo mode, you can long press to start a video. And while you are holding on, the video will keep rolling and then when you're finished you can let go and the video will stop when you are in video mode you can just click once and the video will start oh i wonder if you can change settings while you're in the oh you can so you can change while it's recording okay then you can click again to stop the recording Everything does work when you are in vertical mode. So you can change settings, double click to go into different settings and click to start a recording. So when I first learned about camera control, I think I wasn't the only one who thought that maybe this will get pushed accidentally a lot. It might be difficult to use. But after using it for a while, I have changed my mind about it and I actually really like this new button. When you see the camera control side by side with the power button, you'll notice that the button doesn't extrude from the side panel and rather it's a little indent. So it doesn't actually get pushed by just having it rub against things in your bag or in your pocket as easily as I thought. Also, when you are in anywhere except for the camera mode, the light press doesn't work. Since the light press is actually a software haptic feedback thing, the software is controlling when to expect a light touch and when to not. If you're on the home screen or the lock screen, light press doesn't exist. And when you're in the camera, then you can light press to bring the menu. This is the 16 Pro Max. So currently this screen is not awake. So when you press the camera control button once, it wakes the screen. And when it's awake, you can click it again. The screen has to be awake in order for you to go directly into the camera with the camera control button. This also prevents your camera accidentally being activated when you don't mean to. So this contextual control is very smart and I really like it. I also didn't realize until I actually used it that I don't always take photos like how they hold the phone in the marketing materials like this. Sometimes I'm walking my dog, I have a leash or I'm carrying a bag and I don't necessarily have two hands to hold the camera. When you have two hands and both your arms free and you can hold it like this, sometimes it's faster to just 
use the on-screen menu with your thumb to take a photo or change some menus. But when you only have one hand available, I think that's when the camera control actually really shines. So it's actually really useful to be able to control everything with one hand. I was carrying a lot of stuff with me yesterday, so I had like bags in both hands, but I was still able to hold the camera like this and control things with my left index finger like that, or this side as well. But I think being able to control things with just one hand or even just one finger is really, really useful when you're not completely free. There are huge updates on the iPhone 16 cameras, starting with the most obvious one, it's now vertically placed. This allows it to capture spatial videos and photos using the two cameras that are working simultaneously, which gets shown to each eye, creating a sense of depth for the viewer. Even if you don't own a Vision Pro, but you're newly getting an iPhone 16 or 16 Pro that can take spatial videos, I highly recommend starting to document your life in spatial formats. The viewing devices are hopefully going to get smaller and more accessible, while the moments of your life now at this second won't be accessible except for right this moment. You can also go to your nearest Apple store and ask to see your own spatial content in the Vision Pro demos too. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Here are my thoughts on the 16 camera. This is a first impression, so I need to do an in-depth test later on, but I really like the dual camera system on the new iPhone 16s. The main camera is 48 megapixels and can do 2X as well, and the new ultra wide can now also do macro photography. I think a lot of people who are not hardcore photographers and videographers can use these two cameras to capture everyday lives and special moments without thinking too much about it. I've been an iPhone user for a very long time, so it's not until I started using other phone companies' cameras that I realized how stable and consistent Apple's images are. It's always reliable in different lighting conditions and the iPhone 16 cameras are pretty solid as well. If you're getting the iPhone 16 and it's your first time having a macro camera in your pocket, you're going to have so much fun and you kind of gain this new perspective on, ooh, I wonder what it'll look like if I took a macro photo of this or this flower or this insect. So I hope you have a lot of fun with macro photography. There are some cool updates on the audio side as well. We have better wind noise reduction. The new audio mix feature allows you to edit audio after you take the video. iPhone 16 now can record in spatial audio, so it uses that information to remix the different elements of the audio into different ways. Okay, let me show you how audio mix actually works. So this is just a video that I just took. When you go into edit, you can go into audio mix and there are standard, which is standard, and three other audio mix menus. Let's hear the standard one first. This is the test for spatial audio. I'm talking right now. Okay, he's gonna talk. Test, test, mic, one, two. And when we're having a conversation, we can edit how our sound works. Also, it's very windy. And now let's do in-frame. So in-frame will understand who is in the shot and who is not, and boost the voice of the person in the frame while suppressing the voices of people who are not in the frame. This is the test for spatial audio. I'm talking right now. Okay, he's gonna talk. Test, test, mic, one, two. And when we're having a conversation, we can edit how our sound works. Also, it's very windy. So this one is Studio. Studio will make the sound of everyone's voice sound like it was taken in a studio. It gets rid of echoes, gets rid of noises. How does it sound? This is the test for spatial audio. I'm talking right now. Okay, he's gonna talk. Test, test, mic, one, two. And when we're having a conversation, we can edit how our sound works. Also, it's very windy. And then cinematic mode is very hard to show you on a YouTube video because it utilizes the spatial audio feature. Basically what it does is using spatial audio, it takes the voices 
of the people who are talking and puts it in the front, and everything else will be heard from the back. And that's how movies are mixed. So I won't show you the example here because I don't think you'll be able to hear it on a YouTube video, but this is also an option if you are remixing for spatial audio. All the other menus are also in spatial audio, but it's just doing different things to change the volume or how things are mixed. So I think it's easier to understand in a stereo setting like what you're hearing now. Also, you can see that on the right side, there is like a little meter. So with this meter, you can change how strong the effect is going to affect the video. So let's go to in frame and what you heard before was 50. So you were able to still hear Kay's voice. But if I crank this up to 100, you will not hear anyone other than my voice. This is the test for spatial audio. I'm talking right now. Jay's gonna talk. And when we're having a conversation, we can edit how our sound works. Also, it's very windy. So this obviously makes my voice a little bit crispy. So I don't think I will actually use 100, but that is also an option available to you. And you can kind of customize to your liking. This is going to be great for vlogs. If you're traveling and you want to take your iPhone with you without any other external microphones, this will be really useful to edit your audio with. And then studio mode I would use for like, if you're taking videos without an external microphone, but you want it to sound like you're in a studio. Like if I want to make a YouTube video explaining something where my voice quality is really important, this could be a really good option as well. Also, just to note, this particular demo was shot on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, uh, where there is a 4RA Pro mic in here. The audio mix feature is also available on the 16, but the mic quality is probably better on the Pros. Moving on to the iPhone 16 Pro, the new colors this year are Desert, Natural, White, and Black Titanium. Desert Titanium looks very different from the marketing photos and is actually a pretty light color. I thought it would be a more of like a bronze color, but it's actually very pale and close to a champagne gold with maybe a little bit of a warmer tone iPhone 16 Pro is 6.3 inches and iPhone 16 Pro Max is 6.9 inch Super Retina XDR displays. The 16 Pro models have gotten bigger with the actual foam being a little bit bigger and the bezels are smaller, so the screen itself is also bigger. I have been using the Plus or the Pro Max since the bigger sizes became available and I've always been saying that bigger is always better, but it might be the first year that I actually may think this is a little too big. I've been using the 15 Pro Max and compared to the 15 Pro Max, it is bigger in terms of both width and height. But as a creator, I do like having more screen real estate to edit shorts and fiddle with different camera settings. So I'm currently still on the verge of deciding if it is actually too big for me or not. 16 Pro series also has the new camera control button. Everything I talked about in the 16 section, the 16 Pro can do, if not better. This year, the Pro and Pro Max have the same camera system. The main camera is a 48 megapixel wide and the word Fusion has been attached to it as well. I also need to do a deeper dive on the iPhone 16 Pro cameras, but this time I focused a little bit more on the photography side and we'll continue to test it out for video in the coming weeks. I do like that we got a 48 megapixel ultra wide this year. The Fusion cameras, which fuses more information and the results seem like it's bringing up the shadows even more. If you are a pro or a prosumer who would actually care about preserving shadows, the new photographic styles is pretty nice. When you swipe to the right side, there are creative styles called mood. And on the left side, there are undertones, which are more for controlling skin undertones to your liking. With photographic styles, you can change the style and use the control pad to change the tone and color. And some of the styles have a palette that you can change as well. 
These are kind of fun to mess with, but if you are looking for something like the Fuji recipes or LUTs here, this might not really be it. You are going to be playing within the confines of the preset styles, but I do have a feeling people might start sharing recipes on social media when the phones start being available to everyone. I've been playing with it and I may have found like my current favorite, so I'll put a screenshot here. But if you put enough time and effort into finding your style, this could be really, really fun. I hope I can do more tests here to fine tune and find the settings that I like. So for quick photos to post on social media, I don't have to go into Lightroom to make little color tweaks. iPhone 16 Pro can now take 4K 120 FPS Dolby Vision and ProRes if recorded to an external SSD. Let me show you how 4K 120 works on the iPhone 16 Pro. This was shot in HDR in 16 Pro without any external hardware. Let's go into edit mode. And here you can change the playback speed from 100% to 50, 25, and 20%. Let's play it back in 100% really quickly. So this is what it looks like in 120 frames per second. Let's bump it down to 50. So this is essentially 60 frames per second. Here's 25. It's getting very dramatic here. And now down to 20%. like so. I don't think people who aren't deeply into the video world understand the significance of this, but this is just insane. I'm really excited to start shooting more videos with the iPhone 16 Pro for this channel and experimenting, but as much as I love my nice big cameras, I don't like carrying it around at all. So I'm excited to push the limits of this camera. There was a new anti-reflective coating that was on the Apple's website, but after testing side-by-side -side with iPhone 15 Pro Max, I see a slight improvement, but we are still getting flares and ghosts in the shot. I will be doing more tests though through vlogs in low light situations so we can see it more in action soon. So that was a quick preview of the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro. I will definitely be making more follow-up content for these, as well as talking about Apple intelligence when it comes out of beta. So let me know if there's anything you would like me to try with the new iPhones. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!